I know what it is starting a business, scaling a business, and, and growing a business. But I remember when, I remember when Twitter became a customer, and we, we got to engage with that company when they were just a very small organization. Uh, and that, that was, a, in many ways, a life-changing experience. So instead of thinking about, well, there's the U.S., and then there's, the, then there's Germany, and then there's Brazil, and they're very different, and we have to make you know, separate plans for each market. If you start out by saying, using technology, we can focus on what are the similarities between these markets. Miko, welcome to Talk to Walk. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having us here. No, thanks for coming by. What's entrepreneurship for you? <laughs> entrepreneurship? <laughs> I, I don't know. I that don't was know. funny. <laughs> why, why did you laugh so? Like, wow, the, what's happening? <laughs> I, don't, I, 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 don't, um, I don't know if uh, I know what entrepreneurship is. I know really? what it is. Like, uh, I know what it is starting a business, scaling a business, and, and growing a business. I don't, I'm not sure if that's the same thing as, as being a, an entrepreneur. Really? Um, so why? So why? Mm. <laughs> I, I don't know, like... Uh, Are you an entrepreneur? Well, somebody would, you know, someone would probably describe me as an entrepreneur. Um, Do you describe yourself as an entrepreneur? I, I think we are in a generation where more and more of us think about ourselves as creators and and uh, where we have the potential and we have the opportunity and we have the, uh, we have the platform for uh, uh, building our own destiny and, and building things in general, uh, which makes us a generation of So you find yourself more like a, a, a designer, creator than an entrepreneur? I don't know. I don't know what a definition of an entrepreneur is. I just know that we were three guys coming together, building this company, Sendness. And we had, I think we had very different motivations for doing it. Um, I don't think we, we didn't come together thinking about, about ourselves as entrepreneurs that wanted to, to do this thing. But we had very different motivations for doing this. And we got together and we were, we were committed and could figure out working together and, and, and were very fortunate and lucky with what we were doing and that made us successful. If we hadn't become successful, uh, you know. Maybe they wouldn't call you an entrepreneur. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understand. So when did you start your first, first business? Uh, so my very first business, I think I did that right after school. Um, what was it? I did, uh, I did a lot of different things I've done, like I've always been working kind of, you could call it a business, but I, I was working as a contractor. I did a mm. lot of con contracting work. I did a lot of desktop publishing. Uh, then I did some software I wrote together with some friends. Then I wrote a book about building mm. software. And then I, I've done a lot of different things. Um, and I don't, think that's a, I don't think that's because I'm an entrepreneur per se. I think that's because we are of a generation where it's 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 where you can where you can work differently and and you have the the platform and the opportunity to work differently. Being a more uh, free contractor and being a more you know loosely coupled uh, engagement driven. Yeah, uh, I got you. Let's go back a little bit. Where did you grow up? I I'm, I'm from Denmark. That's the accent and the broken English. <laughs> and we, and we originally Same with me. <laughs> <laughs> but we feel good here in the Bay Area. <laughs> yes, but that's the great thing about the Bay Area that yeah. it's it's very easy for everybody to feel welcome here. Yeah. So you grew up there. How were you as a student? Um, I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Same I just, with me. <laughs> I just had the, I had parent teacher conferences yesterday. I have four kids and. Uh, you know, they're much, much better students than I am. Uh, I, you know, uh, I, I didn't think I had the patience really for school and so on, but you know, I had a good time. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> what about family? Family, I'm, 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 I'm definitely a family person. I, I definitely became a family person when I met my wife and suddenly we got like a hundred kids. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, despite everything and all, you have you time have nowadays to spend with them? Oh, it, it's definitely getting more and more complicated to find time and, and quality time, but that's kind of the, the that's, that's what's happening. That's what's, that's kind of your destiny when you build something that is growing so fast and taking so, up so much of your time. 
um, if you still want time with your family, then you make a lot of other sacrifices. Mm -hmm. and, and that's Where do you look for information? What do you read about it? Um, do you watch TV? No, we don't watch TV. I think my primary key, my primary source of information is Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and that gives me kind of a worldview of what's going on. Both like local news, both tech news, global news. Um, I use Twitter as kind of the primary interface to navigate the, the, the information that is related to me. Good, good. So let's talk now, how do you guys thought about Zendesk <laughs> and then on the beginning, on the first beginning, I saw a couple pictures actually. Yeah. So you were like very, you know, happy with that, right? <laughs> you were happy. I don't know if you were making any money, but you were very <laughs> happy. So on those pictures I saw, uh, what was your focus when you just started? So I think we were, uh, in many ways, we were three guys with very different ambitions and very different places in our lives. But I think we all had this dream of wanting to build our own product and taking that product to market. And I think also we also felt relatively old. Mm -hmm. So if we also felt that if we were going to do it, now was the time. You know, we had to do it before we became too settled and family and all these things to go too much of our lives. So it was kind of, in many ways, last chance for us to go out and really build something. So about product, what was your dream? Like, I want to build a product for? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think like, um, it, it's a little bit coincidental that we happened in the customer service industry. But uh, two of us, two of the co-founders, two of my, uh, my, one of my co-founders and myself spent a few years in that industry in the, uh, implementing customer service systems both from the technology side and the business process side and that led us to a lot of insight in that industry and, and I think in, in, in general we're just underwhelmed by the by the technology by the lack of innovation and so on in that industry and we said we can just build this product so much better for the current generation for, for a new generation of users um, and, and that was very much what began Sendesk um, and in many ways we've been very fortunate that you know, cloud adoption, software as a service, consumerization, all these trends have really, really accelerated our business. And at the same time, the voice of the customer has never been louder than it is today, which has really changed the relationship between businesses and its customers. Cool. Uh, if I talk about product, process, and business model, mm -hmm. which one you think it's, it was the more most important thing for you? And did you realize that before it happened? No, you don't. Like, we didn't really have... Like we never really had a business model. I'm oh, sorry, like a business plan. You yeah, know? not really. I think what we had was like a passion for building a great product, you know, and seeing that uh, how seeing that we could build something that was super easy, elegant, intuitive, simple, beautiful, and we could see that this could just solve or this could be so useful in so many different situations. The pride in the product. Uh, drove us initially. How did you come to the Silicon Valley? So, um, to Silicon the Bay Area. Yeah, Silicon Valley, San Francisco is always. Uh, I think if you are in a tech industry, if you are, uh, if you are a tech startup, this is home. Mm -hmm. This is where the action is. Mm -hmm. This is the mecca of, of tech startups. Uh, same way, if you are in fashion, you can go to Paris or Milan or something like that. If you are in the financial sector, you would go to New York or to London or to Hong Kong. Um, I think if you are a tech startup, this is where the action takes place. And I think all the three of us had traveled a lot, been here a lot, and we, we knew we had that, had that feeling, we had that, we could sense that energy that you find here in San Francisco. And we definitely had that kind of that tech crunch bug, mm -hmm. you know, reading tech crunch all the time, seeing all these things going on over here, and basically wanting to come over here and be part of it. Good, good. And did you guys fund it yourself? Or? It, for the first couple of years, we were relatively bootstrapped. We did a little with uh, family and friends mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and an ancient investor. In I wish I, I were your family. Then. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, but that's a lottery, you know. And we, we, that's the kind of thing, if you, if you raise money from your family and friends, you have to explain to them that it's a lottery. Mm -hmm. And there's like 99% chance that they will never see any return on that investment. You know, our family and friends were lucky. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it was a good lottery. It, they came out to take it, and, and it was a good investment for them. Uh, sure. But it's, it's risky raising uh, money from your family and friends. And then when you guys got here, uh, of course, you looked for money, right? 
Yeah, so we've been raising a lot of money, a gazillion dollars, um, close to a gazillion. Uh, we, raised, no, we raised something like, what is it, 90, 80 something? I can't even remember. Wow. Um, so C, C round or? D round. D round. D round. Okay. In, in, in our days, a, a round was much smaller than it is today. Uh, but again, we have, we have raised a lot of money. Uh, but it's also, we have, a, we have a very good business here. We are scaling, uh, we are growing, we're getting a lot of customers, getting a lot of uh, revenues. Uh, so it's a very healthy business and, and investors have a lot of support and, and uh, confidence in our business model. What's the difference today when you look for your business and you're growing? So you're in nine countries already? I think we have offices in yeah, in probably nine countries. Offices in nine countries, yeah. and but we have customers, customers in more than we have customers in more than 140 countries. More than 140 countries, yeah. so more than 30,000 customers. Yeah, yeah, more than 30. And that's customers. businesses all around the world: small businesses, large businesses, small startups, large startups, a lot of different businesses. What's what's different today? Having 30,000 customers, having all these feedbacks, and so. Uh, how to to say because you pro probably have a lot of feedbacks that you say oh and then you have people here uh, yeah. inside the company that say yeah. hey we have to do this and then somebody goes no we have to do that yeah so how to define where to go yeah, yeah but ma managing the business as things becomes more complex becomes more complicated because you have a lot of customers they uh, they want to influence the roadmap you have a lot of large customers that have a different voice and then you have a lot of ambitious people within your organization. So it's all about building an internal framework for channeling people's passions and challenging our, uh, challenging our uh, customers inside into an ability to provide those capabilities. So we need to build out good frameworks, good platforms for them to customize the application and, and add the kind of functionality they want to. But it's also we also need to build a culture where we try to think ahead of the customers and try to think ahead of the curve so that we show customers a path and we open their eyes to a new way of working, a new way of doing things. But it's, it's definitely getting more complicated as you grow and you need to be careful not fall into the trap as so many other customers have done where they, you know, where they end bloating the product and adding all these kind of features and really trying to remain beautifully similar is, is increasingly complex as you grow the organization. When you look for your portfolio of products, what's the one that make you really proud that you say? You know, this one I think was the thing that changed our lives. <laughs> I, I don't think we have a single thing like that. I think we've had, we have so many moments in the lifetime of our company that, that we are so excited about. I remember when, I remember when Twitter became a customer and we, we got to engage with that company when they were just a very small organization. Uh, and that, that was a, in many ways a life changing experience. and. And we've been extremely proud about working with that company for now for many many years. I remember the when I remember when Groupon became a customer, um, just such a small company up in Chicago, and and I, we really we really really didn't understand what they were doing, and suddenly there were this <laughs> humongous, you know, world changing company, and and. And they're still a customer of ours today, and we're still extremely excited about them. So we had these moments of where we've had an insight, inside a view into some great companies and how they've grown, which is an amazing experience. At the same time, we run into these small companies where we can see that their usage of Sendesk has transformed their business, had made them extremely successful because now they've had gotten some new capabilities for managing and engaging with their customers, and that's. That's so. That's so. Um, that's such a great experience to meet these companies and know that you've actually changed the destiny for some companies. What's coming next on your on your business? Like, what's going to be the way for the future of customer experience? I think that uh, that we're seeing some trends uh, in the in the society today like like i said before the voice of the customer has never been louder than it is today and it's it's you know it's it we as consumers can influence not only our friends and family but we can basically influence the whole world with our opinions about products and services both in a negative way like sure. how we can share our bad experiences but we can also share our good experiences and I think that companies' ability to turn their customers 
into evangelists, into promoters, into basically their sales and marketing channel is really, um, is really an opportunity for companies to stand out and, and compete on completely new terms. And so we see that very much as our mission to, to help our customers completely transform the relationship to their, to their customers and thereby taking their business to a new level. Are you doing this with your own company? Yes, I think that we, we have to be a company that, that eats our own dog food or drinks Kool-Aid or whatever you say in, <laughs> in English. Um, so so um, it's, it's like for us to stay connected with our customers is, is, is increasingly important. And, and it's of course one of the things that gets increasingly complicated too because now we have, you know, we have 30,000 uh, businesses using Sendesk and we have like a quarter million operators of our software and like we, we support like 200 million end users out there. It's a lot of people. Um, but I think uh, if we can, we try to make it part of our DNA that we want, that we need to engage with every single customer and we need to figure out a way of of uh, in engaging with them in, a, in an honest and an authentic way. Uh, I think we, we need to set that example. And we've also found out that, for example, almost two thirds of our leads, me meaning people coming to us to do business, they come to us organically. They come to us through word of mouth. And, and that is very, very important for, to continue to drive the business. Sure, sure. Yourself as a CEO, what, what are actually the, the things that you used to do that you cannot do anymore because mm. the company grow? And what are the things that you used to do that you're still doing but you don't want to do? <laughs> That's, you know, the role. So I'm the CEO of the company, but I think my role is also very much to be, the, to be a founder of the company. Um, because uh, all three founders are still very much engaged in the company on a day-to-day -day basis and and on an operational uh, with operational roles and I think that's very important for the company that they have this very clear tie into the founding story of the company so that everybody understands what made us do this what made us create this company uh, and I think that's a big part of my role too um, I think beyond that it's very much up to me to build a great team uh, because a company is never better than the employees you have in that company. Sure. So putting together a really good team around me, making sure that we have a good practice for hiring and, and hiring great people and, and uh, it's, it's, it's very much setting the standard for that, setting the, the culture for that, or setting the kind of the, the being like setting an ideal for how we want to hire and how we want to attract great people who can challenge the organization and keep moving us forward and so that we re remain a young you know aggressive company is 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 I think I is that I think that very much as that is my primary role so I want you to tell me something yes. for sure you're working in some project right now really important for the company, mm -hmm. really important for the customers. Which product is it? <laughs> I would never be able to tell you. Oh, that. come yeah. on. Why everybody say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're, we're working on so many different things. And like one of the things I, I, I personally invest a lot of time is, is in our international operations. Um, and it was a pleasure for me to go down last month to Sao Paulo and open uh -huh. our office there and uh, spend time with our local customers. We have more than a thousand customers in Sao Paulo. Wow. Yeah, and uh, it's, just, it's just great to, to, work with the, uh, to work with a country and a culture that is so rewarding uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and spend time with our customers down there. And, and our continued success and so on in, in Brazil is one of the things that I, I, I spend a lot of time on. We have a number of markets around the world where we really want to invest our time and, and become successful and figure out a way for us to be successful, respecting kind of how that country operates and how that culture operates. So that's also why you, we have, as you see, we have so many Brazilians in the office because like we need to, we need to embrace the country, but the country also needs to embrace us. What have you learned with this experience of expansion? So uh, what about the different cultures, how to, 
work with these different cultures, how to go for a market. Yeah. Tell us that. So um, I think that we have an opportunity today to build technology or using today's technology, we have an opportunity to really uh, focus on the big similarities in the markets. So mm. instead of thinking about, well, there's the US and then there's, the, then there's Germany and then there's Brazil and they're very different and we have to make you know, separate plans for each market. If you start out by saying using technology, we can focus on what are the similarities between these markets. So you don't have to tailor it for every kind of industry or use case or region or country or culture, but really focus on the similarities. And I think today, in today's world, you can do that a lot more, a lot easier than you used to. And that I think also was very much the platform for Sendus, the reason why we could grow so quickly, um, that we, we, we organically, through word of mouth, through customers just coming to us and starting using our products, we grew so quickly. That was by our focus on like what what, what makes us the same rather than what makes us different. Um, so already very early on, we got a lot of great customers in Brazil without having you know, people on the ground, without having anything available in Brazilian Portuguese or anything like that. People just come, came to our website, start using our software. And I remember that company, what were they called, Net Movies mm -hmm. in Brazil, that became a customer many, many years ago and used that to support their operations. And they're still a customer today, even though I know they have a they have a different profile as a customer, as a company today, um, but it's just a story about how companies can come to us, start using our software, and and that us making it very easy for them, uh, make it very you know uh, makes it easy for us to scale to. Good. Give a tip for the entrepreneurs that are watching us. <laughs> a tip. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Even though you don't feel like an entrepreneur, <laughs> I think it's I th <laughs> no. But I think like it. I think it's it's a great experience to build uh, technology and build product and take pride in something and really uh, get that validated by putting it out out there and get companies and users to to use it. I think that's like that's a great experience. You have to be aware when you do that. You know, more often than than not, you will fail. You know, it's it's very hard to be really successful, but. Failing is also just part of the journey. You learn so much from failing. So, you know, I'm. I'm an what have you learned from from failing? It's it's just you, you learn like. I think have one. You of fail? The, oh, I, I failed a lot. I think, um, and I think one of the things that, one of the things that, you learn in failing is that, what you believe, in what makes you successful is rarely what makes you successful. You know, you have to, being successful, you have to be extremely humble about that because very rarely you actually know what makes you successful. Uh, it's, it's very hard to understand sometimes the market dynamics and what's actually make, makes you successful. Um, so like constantly being humble to kind of what you build and, and, and how you grow that and, and like kind of the dynamics of the market, I think it's very important. Um, but like embracing failure and realizing that you will fail uh, before you become successful and that will also teach you whether this is the right path for you uh, as you can see what's your favorite brand brand oh you know being here in san francisco and silicon valley it's it's very hard not to be an apple fanboy you know everybody is including my entire family <laughs> all the kids have little ipads and wake up with them and sleep with them and i don't know what <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but i think there's a lot there's, there's such a there's so many kind of great companies out there today i'm a i'm personally a big fan of mailchimp in atlanta uh, which is just an amazing company and but there's so many great brands out there leadership do you have somebody who you say, oh, this guy is like one guy that I always learn from him, from his attitude, from the way he does things? Um, so um, I've only been here in San Francisco for four years. So I, I, I basically when I came, I didn't have a network and I was very, I had to rely a lot on the network I could get through my investors, through my board and so on. Um, I think I've, I've, I've spent time, they've been, been helpful in introducing me to the right people and also helped me kind of distilling the trends and distilling what's going on. And I've been able to use that as a, uh, to, to uh, learn a lot about uh, uh, San Francisco and Silicon Valley business culture and how to, how to build a company and how to think big. 
which is very hard sometimes, especially when you come from a small country. Yeah. Um, but I think that, uh, but I think that there's a good, there's a good tradition here in San Francisco for, for what do you say, paid forward. So it's very easy to get introductions to great talent, to CEOs, to other founders, spend time with them and learn from some of their experiences. And, and I think I've, I've profited a lot from that. And I also try to pay it forward now with, with other entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. <laughs> it's just funny that you, you, don't, you don't feel like an entrepreneur. Uh, it's yeah, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's so I'm, funny. A, I'm a little bit afraid of the cliche of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And as the, the, the worst cliche is the serial entrepreneur. I don't know what that is. That's like, that's a, that's a masochist. <laughs> If you've done it once, you know, yeah. all right. Okay, we, we are finishing here. So what's the future on business? Oh, we have a lot of plans. Like we are growing tremendously. No, 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 I'm sorry. Not for you. You talk about yourself. You talk about Zendesk. I'm talking about business. Uh, okay, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I was with Phil from Evernote, mm, yeah. the CEO. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. a wonderful guy. Yeah. He's cool. He is. So, uh, and then he told me that he would give some tip for an entrepreneur nowadays would be do something that makes you happy. But five years ago was like, look for a big market. Yeah. So do you believe that nowadays is like more about happiness than that is about market? No, I think that I think the essence, and that's probably also what Phil was getting to, is that you can't just you can't just it's not just about following the money or following the market or whatever. Like you have to you have to put your passion and your ideas and your ideals into something that you create, and it's only by being authentic and being really believing in what you're doing and 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 kind of cringing out your soul through that product that you will be truly successful. And I think that goes for everybody. And if you are successful with that, you will create the market and you will create the opportunity and all that stuff. Um, and if you do it and you don't call it an entrepreneur, what's the word for that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What, what's it called in Brazilian? What do you say, Brazilian? Gonna, what do you say in Brazilian Portuguese? Uh, you know, I think there is a thing that a guy told me here. Yeah. That I, here I say in the Bay Area that I think it is better than an entrepreneur. Okay, what is that? Gishiro. <laughs> Gishiro? You know what Gishiro no, is? I don't know. You don't know what Gishiro <laughs> is? Oh, <laughs> no. come on, man. You are a Gishiro. I have a Gishiro? Yeah. All right. I'm Get a shit done. Get shit done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's better than an entrepreneur, right? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Gishiro. I don't know. It's like Gishiro. Gishiro. Okay? Good. Cool. Thanks, Gishiro. Thanks so much. Good seeing you. Good seeing <laughs> hey, you. Hey, thanks, Miko. Thank you very much for your time and this beautiful place. Then I, I really think this this company uh, what I what I've seen from this company from outside I can see now when I meet you so cool thank you very much <laughs> no thank you this is Miko and I'll see you next round mm -hmm.